almost got lost in the shuffle, but earnings season just kicked off after the close today with Alcoa, the important aluminum maker that gives you terrific insight in everything related to aerospace, cars, trucks, commercial construction, packaging, even heavy industrial machinery. I like Alcoa long term because CEO Klaus Kleinfeld has been transforming this company from a blah, commodity aluminum producer into a manufacturer of high value added aluminum products. But that doesn't make it immune to the world's economies. And there's also an acquisition that's putting immense arbitrage pressure on the stock, causing it to tumble nearly 34% year to date, including a nasty 56 cents or 5% decline in today's session. Now, Cohen just reported, and while the earnings of uh, 19 cents a share, excluding special items, missed Wall Street's estimates, some say by three or four cents. Nevertheless, the company did deliver respectable revenues. So let's check in with Klaus Kleinfeld, the chairman and CEO of Alcoa, hear more about the quarter and where his company is headed. Mr. Kleinfeld, welcome back to Mad Money. Hello, Jim. Good to hear you. All right, Klaus, you got a crazy day here. I mean, China, the market was at one point down 7%. We That's obviously funny. are very worried about Greece and worried about the denouement that could play out this weekend. But the company I see in Alcoa that's in front of me is largely, I think, moving to be levered to big industries that are in America that are doing well. I'm talking about construction doing very well, aerospace doing very well, cars and trucks doing very well. Yes. The Alcoa of 2015 yes. and 2016 will be more American than Chinese. Should I be less worried about China <laughs> after, after I read this quarter than before? Yeah, that's exactly right. And we are working on it tirelessly. And you see it again reflected in this quarter. You see the, the, the outperformance on the value add. I mean, highest ever uh, qu uh, quarterly performance on, on our engineered products and solution business. Nice profitable growth in our midstream business. The integration of the acquisitions going well. And then on the commodity side, where obviously, I mean, these type of macro events matter and they influence the commodity side, you see nice resilience in face of the headwinds. Alumina business, best ever first half since 2007. And the primary business was resilient in spite of this drop of more than 20% on the primary metal side. And then you see a nice productivity and you see good, good, uh, good cash flow, right? So that's what you're seeing, and uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, we're moving along the line of what I've always talked about, the transformation of Alcoa, more value add, becoming a lightweight metal expert, you know, while we are increasing the com competitiveness of our commodity business. All right, now we're in the phase, the final, the, really the final lengths of the RTI acquisition. I know you talk about 2017 uh, accretive gains, but what I would need to know is that you got, for, let's say you're using 2014 revenue mix, aerospace is 51. When you close RTI, could aerospace, which is regarded even in, I know you had to downgrade it by a percent just because of deliveries, but aerospace is really in still major secular growth mode. What percentage of Alcoa at this time next year will be aerospace? Oh, that's hard to hard, hard to judge, Jim, because you've seen what, where we've come from. I mean, with RTI, we'll have a, a kind of as, as a performer of 5.6 billion of aerospace revenues, right? But obviously, this will grow much, much more given on what we have in store also from the organic growth side. So don't just focus on the acquisitions. That's a good thing for Thrixen on the jet engine side, Tital on titanium, and now RTI, if all goes well, which I assume, you know, so that's all, that's, that's all good. But it's a nice market. It continues to grow. We saw it again at, at the air show this year. We are projecting for this year 8 to 9 percent growth. And then in the next years, it's, it's, it's also nicely profitably growing. But it's not the only business. And that's actually very important because I, I don't really would like to stand just on one leg. I mean, look at what we've done in the automotive business. And we continue to change the automotive business with the micromill technology, which we haven't even yet commercially brought into, into the mix, but we've put it out there, you know. So, and then you look at all the other things, gas turbines coming back, building construction in the U.S. coming back. The U.S. part actually has been more important already, and also a lot of the investments that we've done have gone into the U.S. and partially into Europe, because that's really where the music is in those type of developed, developed businesses that we are playing well, in. You are, of the CEOs I know, you know more about China than any I, than any I know. So I'm going to ask you both, uh, uh, one on business, you do have that production down 34% on, in uh, heavy-duty truck. Now, obviously, there are some reasons why there's a uh, strong pull-ahead demand from 2014. Yes. But you also have been to China. And you know what? I'm wondering whether the changes that are in China, which is they were trying to make it more demand-oriented from the consumer point of view, are these things that really, do they really matter to a company like Alcoa? 
Well, at this point in time, they matter less than they did before. I mean, before when we were primarily a commodity company and in the commodity space, every news out there influences the commodity prices. I mean, it's less so about uh, supply and demand. There's a lot of noise that's going into it. Supply and demand is a longer term, longer term determined of, of the pricing. So you're right. I mean, it matters, it matters less. Uh, at, at the same time, I mean, uh, China for us is becoming in my view, potentially a very interesting market for value at products at one point in time. We today, the presence that we as Alcoa have in China is not in the upstream side. It is in the value at side because China is moving more to value at. They need more value at products. So we want to participate from that move. And we have already positioned ourselves in that way. So today we already have aerospace automotive components in China that we manufacture in China and that we can use for the Chinese industries to ramp up as well as low cost opportunities for those kind of standard components uh, to basically comp continue to be competitive also on that, on that end. Well, one last question. This is the first time that I've seen you had a, uh, give a downtick in aerospace. Is that meaningful or is that just because of the way deliveries are? No, that's, that's, that's actually more a technical thing. What happened is there are two new platforms, the uh, 320 and the C-series, C and unfortunately, they haven't been ramping up. This is probably more an issue of the supply chain. They haven't been ramping up through the first half as expected. So technically, this moves into, into 2016 and 2017. So what we've done, you see, we've taken one percentage point down in growth for this year, but we've substantially ramped up the 2016 and 17 because in reality, the numbers that you see there are higher than we expected. So it's just technically a move for moving over there. And frankly, you know, 8 to 9 percent compared to 9 to 10, I mean, it's still a lot. Absolutely. Nine years order backlog, you know. Uh, 125 billion orders during the Paris Air Show and, and signed by the Chinese right after this. Those are the numbers, even higher than last year at Farnborough, where it was 116 billion. Those are the numbers. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to the arbitrage pressure ending an RTI when that deal closes and the new Alcoa that will begin in August. Klaus Kleinfeld, Chairman and CEO of Alcoa. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. Wonderful. Stock's been pushed down heavily by arbitrage pressure. Uh, is it a place to go? It's an uncertain market, but it is certainly a better Alcoa. Mad Money's back into the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.